My name is Marlo Stoudemire. I'm the project director of Detroit 67, looking back to move forward. We're here today at Gordon Park at the corner of 12th and Claremont Street. And this is the place where many people believe the rebellion, riot, uprising in Detroit in 1967 started. Detroit 67, looking back to move forward, is a multi-year community engagement project that's designed to bring diverse voices and communities together around the historic effects of a crisis so people can find their role in the present to inspire the future. It's been 50 years since the tragic week in 1967 that rocked Detroit and really brought the nation's eyes um, to the attention of what's happening in Detroit and around America with regards to civil unrest, uh, police brutality, and just unjust conditions in urban communities. And so what we're doing at the Detroit Historical Society is trying to give people an opportunity to do three things. That's engage around the topic, have a level of reflection with a blockbuster exhibition and massive oral history project, but more importantly, inspire people to a level of action to create a better future. So when the year 2067 comes around, there's a different story being told. And Gordon Park is a perfect example of how memorialization, memorialization, commemoration, but more importantly, revitalization can be at the forefront of this way we move forward. What happened here in 67? Well, there are a lot of different perspectives on what happened here, but the, for common knowledge, there was a blind pig, which is an after hours facility that a lot of people use, which is technically illegal, that was raided over here at the corner of 12th and Claremont. And it came on the heels of years and years of unjust policing and issues between the community and law enforcement that eventually just spilled over to frustration. It wasn't something that people planned in terms of a revolution or some type of scheduled uprising. It was an instant, which is why a a lot of people refer to it as a rebellion because people rebelled against a force that they felt was unfair. It eventually spread out into the streets where there was a lot of unrest. You know, if you look across the park now and in this community, it's hard to believe that this was once a thriving and booming business district, but it really was. There were stores owned by black, white, you name it. There, a lot of people did a lot of uh, business here. They didn't have to leave the community. And before you knew it, a rock was thrown, a glass was broken, looting occurred, fire started. And it wasn't just black folks. It was one of the most integrative incidents that's ever happened in Detroit, as our former police chief, Ike McKinnon, once told us. And so it spread across the city in a lot of different components. It didn't touch every aspect of the city, but it was something that spread. It was at that particular time in the 1960s, the deadliest uprising or unrest that we had in America. And there was a lot of lives lost, a lot of arrests. And for some people, it divided us even further than where we already were. One of the reasons why the Detroit Historical Society decided to target this park was when we first started, we came over here and there was no history. There was nothing here to tell generations of young people and even people who currently live here the true story or give them context to what happened around here 50 years ago. We learned that in other parts of the world, they don't run from the history. They embrace what happened so you can use it as a case for not to repeat it, to not do it again and not let it happen. So what we've decided to do is work with the city of Detroit and the state of Michigan to put in a historical marker with full context of what happened, but more importantly, to really show that a park can be a symbol of revitalization and a way forward for a community. Not historical societies, not city government, but for the people who live in these communities, the people who either had to move away or those who stayed and fought for the last 50 years. This is their park and we want history to be at the forefront of why it's valuable to our future. It's not a celebration. It's a level of memorialization, commemoration, and how we all together pivot to a point of moving forward. Not moving forward past what happened, but moving the conversation forward, moving our actions forward, moving the engagement forward collectively and showing how if we're truly going to move forward together and inclusively, the community has to be involved. And so we're coming to their place. And we're hoping that we can be a part of this community, if not just for today, but moving forward for the rest of our history. I hope people walk away with a few things. One, understanding how we got to 67, what happened here and around the community during that time. But more importantly, there wasn't a period at the end of that sentence. We're still in the 50th year and that this is still an ongoing narrative. And if we don't take control of our narrative by leading with action and finding a way to move forward, we're destined to repeat the stories of the past and the history of the past. And that the young people and that the people who are in the community now have just as much utility, opportunity and responsibility to shape the year 2067. And if a physical space like a park can be something that triggers that and get people engaged and activated and show promise, then that's what we're looking for. We're looking for physical demonstrations of how history is relevant to a community's present.
What are some other parts of this community revitalization project? Well, there are some other components that we've launched uh, with regards to Gordon Park. So the Historical Society, which traditionally works within the four walls of the museum, has launched a placemaking initiative, right? And what it is, is using Gordon Park as kind of like a pilot to provide micro grants to organizations around the community to do what we call LQC placemaking projects, lighter, quicker, and cheaper placemaking projects to demonstrate in contrast of everything that was destroyed 50 years ago, how we can build and grow and develop things in our communities whether it be a mural, whether it be a community park, whether it be a playground set, something that's going to bring people together in a community and not separate us.